Hello everyone and welcome to Jean-Claude Perrault, episode 2. At the end of episode 1, a man had been talking to Lola and was just about to get back in contact with Persephone. Before we even get started, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. When the call was over, he messaged Persephone. I talked to Lola, but she talks to me about other things. I only want to talk about business. You know, I've already explained everything to you. So you can explain to Lola. And if she's not interested, then we can both invest. I see that you, Lola, are not interested enough in the project. I knew that Lola had come to mix up my words. Of course we're interested. It's you that isn't interested enough and won't talk properly to your potential business partners. We've just spent 15 minutes with the people behind the counter in the bank. They absolutely refused to let us send money for an investment in Ivory Coast. We don't know what else we can do. Can we send the money to them using MoneyGram? Yes, you can send by MoneyGram. OK, they have MoneyGram at the post office here in town. We'll walk round to there. Lola says we need to know who to send it to. But you should send it in euros. OK, I expect they'll let us do that. We just arrived at the post office. Who do we send it to, please? And so he gave the name of a money mule in Ivory Coast. OK, thanks. Here's the MoneyGram address, but you'll have to do it in detail of a thousand euros six times and one of 500 euros, you understand, where you can make six receipts for 999 euros and one receipt for 500 euros. You understand? Yes, OK. We're just in the queue. They do it now? They won't let us send more than 1,000 euros a day, but we've sent 1,000. They gave us this receipt and said that as it's going to Côte d'Ivoire, Mary Karuma needs to call the number on the receipt to claim the money. And so we sent him one of those fake MoneyGram receipts. But I can't see the writing on the receipt. Is it a MoneyGram receipt, he said? Yes, it's very faint, I'm sorry, but there's a phone number on there. Hold on, I'll type it for you. We're going to Scarra Bray now, and there's no phone signal there. Leave me a message when Mrs Croom has collected the money, and we'll send more tomorrow. But you'll have to do it with money, Graham. Yeah, we will. We're off now. We just got back to the car. But this receipt's not a MoneyGram receipt. Yes, it is. They've checked the MoneyGram box at the top right. OK, we're off now. Talk to you later. OK, he said. He came back about 15 minutes later, by which time, of course, Lola and Persephone had gone out for the day. The manager says he can't get the money back and you're the one who has to call to receive the withdrawal code. So call the number yourself and they'll send you a withdrawal code, which you can send to me. Mr Karuma says it's impossible, so you're the one who has to call them. Mr Karuma says that he cannot recover the money and that you must call the agency and a withdrawal code will be sent to you. And it's with this code that he'll be able to make the withdrawal. Uh, but I have a solution to transfer the rest of the money. For the rest of the transfer, I'll send you a bank account to which you will transfer the money. But it's a French bank account since you cannot transfer the money to the Ivory Coast. You'll transfer €6,000 to the bank account that I will send to you. OK? We just got home. Lola's just going to call that number. That is the number on the MoneyGram receipt. She has an international call plan on her phone. She says only the recipient of the funds can call. They won't give the number to anyone else. The scammer is given the number of a fake MoneyGram claim line. Two years ago, I put a video on this channel where someone's money mule spent half an hour calling, trying to claim the money. Well, a man called that claim line eight times over the course of two days. The longest call lasted for 28 minutes. And for those of you that are new to the channel, I've made another video where Jean-Claude, or Mr. Karuma, is trying to call that claim line. And I warn you in advance, there's lots of ear shattering music on it. It's a repetitive claim line. The claim line is simply designed to waste the scammers time till ultimately they give up and cost them money because they're phoning a US phone number. OK, he said a bit later, Mr Karuma says he received the money, but he says we have to make a bank transfer for the rest of the money. OK, we couldn't work out whether there was a money mill who'd lied and said they'd got the money or whether there's only one person involved in this scam. And he was lying, saying he'd got the money to encourage them to send the rest. So can you make the transfer this evening? I'll send you the bank details now. So this evening, we'll each transfer €6,000 so that the work begins tomorrow morning. I want the weeding done. What do you say? When we each pay €6,000 from the Ministry of Industry and Mines, 
Remember that, it's the Ministry of Industry and Mines at the moment. We'll award us a document of the land. Then the workers will start weeding the land. I would prefer that we pay the 6,000 euros this evening. I prefer, and the extraction will start on Thursday, you understand? But the Director General of Mines says he asks that we pay by bank transfer. You understand? OK, sounds good. But it should be 5,500 euros as we already sent a 1,000. OK, then I'll send you the bank details on which you must carry out the banking transaction because the General Director of Industry and Mines is requesting a bank transfer. I hope you'll make the bank transfer this evening because tomorrow morning the work will begin. And he sent the details of a mummy mule. Here are the banking details, so do it now, and I'll do the same, because the work will start tomorrow morning. OK, so I'm waiting for the bank transfer receipt. What on earth? Came back Persephone a bit later. Neither of the apps will let me send anything. HSBC says I have to wait seven days before sending anything, and Bank of Scotland says the same as yesterday. I have to go into my local branch. Why is this so difficult? It's so frustrating. So, can you go to the bank first thing tomorrow morning to make the transfer? That's our only option. Yes, I also feel frustrated, but I hope tomorrow will be the best and we can pay by bank transfer. I hope so too. It's so annoying. We're going out for dinner, so I'll talk to you again tomorrow. But you can try to send by MoneyGram online now. Try, and we'll see. But you'll send them to France in my name, Jean-Claude Perrault, online. Meanwhile, Lola is struggling because... Apparently, she can curse roundly, as we all know, in English, but she doesn't know how to curse in French. Clearly a huge gap in her education there. Good morning, he said the following morning. The general manager called me this morning. He said he no longer wants to receive the money through MoneyGram, so we have to make the effort to pay by bank account. Do you understand? The land is already reserved, for we will just wait for the rest of the money for the weeding to begin. But please make the effort to send the money to the bank account I gave you last night. It's a French account. Try to convince the bankers and they will do it. Make the effort to make the bank transfer. It will be better for all of us. What do you say? We must transfer the money to this bank account this morning and as early as possible and the weeding will begin. We save time. What do you say? It's good. What do you say? Good morning, said Persephone. My bank opens at 9.30am, so we'll go in as soon as it opens. But I hope you can do it by bank transfer because the Director General of Industry and Mines asked that we transfer the money by bank transfer. I'll copy and paste what I said last night. Are you sure you read what I typed? She said copying and pasting the bit about having to go in and not being able to pay through HSBC. I'm trying really hard to get the money to you and you keep telling me to do the same thing, the same thing that we know doesn't work. I believe your bank did not make the transfer because you had to send the money to Africa. That could be right. I have to wait till they open this morning. So since I sent you a French bank account, then maybe they will agree to make the transfer. I hope so. So I'm waiting for the transfer code. This is so frustrating said Persephone a couple of hours later. The bank still won't let me send. They didn't believe that it wasn't for the same thing. They said they speak French in Ivory Coast and now I'm asking to send money to France. They refused to let me make the transfer. Lola got very cross and she's gone off on her own to see if she can sort something out. There isn't a branch of her bank here in Kirkwall. She said something about Western Union, so I don't know what she's going to do. She can be a bit hot-headed and it's best to leave her alone when she's angry. OK! But then what have you decided? Lola can do it online with her bank, since her bank cannot find it in Kirkwall. If she can't do it, then go to the agency and send a thousand euros by Rhea. And he said his own name and his city of Paris. Here's my address, but I'd like you to transfer the money by Rhea or Western Union. When you're finished, they'll give you a withdrawal code. At that point, my phone rang with some news that meant that I was offline for several hours. Hey! He said after lunch, why do you not say anything? Followed a bit later, by the general manager called me. And the land is already at our disposal. He's just waiting for the money from you. I got home a bit later that evening. Have you spoken to Lola? I spent most of the day in the bathroom. I don't know if it was something I ate last night or if I've caught the awful norovirus, but I've been really sick and shaking. I feel horrible. I'm really disappointed in myself, he said, and I'm ashamed. What am I going to say to the ministry? I'm really so ashamed as a businessman. I've done so much foreign affairs, but here it is. I'm ashamed and I'm disappointed, really disappointed. Meanwhile, Lola had a conversation with him.
Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. I don't think I will. Uh, yes. I will go tonight because uh, this evening I'm busy. But. Uh, I'm busy. Yeah. You can. You can. You can. You can send me the money. What? What did you say? For five. What did you say? What did you say? Hello. Yes. On five minutes. On five minutes. You can send the money. In five minutes? Yeah. Okay, I want to talk to you. Hello, pick my video call. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Pick my video call, I want to talk to you. I don't know. If you don't pick my video call, I will not go to send any money. Okay, now I not, I don't. Bye. Bye. At this point, we both agreed that he was boring and that it was time to end the bait. After he'd spoken to Lola, he got back to Persephone. Listen, go to the agency where you made the money gram transfer and get your money. Don't be ridiculous, said Persephone. Mr Karuma collected the money yesterday. I spoke to Lola and we've decided that we don't want to go ahead with the investment. We don't say how it can work if we can't have proper discussions with you. I don't speak French. Lola does, but not well enough for business. And you don't speak English, so it can't work. I see you're not interested. I'm a very qualified businessman, he said. I'm putting efforts for our partnership. But I see you're not putting any effort and you don't trust I even provided authentic documents you can check. I hate the lack of confidence in business. Thanks. Then stop moaning like a herc toddler. I understand English well, but the problem is that I can't express myself well like Lola does, and she also can't express herself well in French. Goodbye. OK, thanks. I hope you'll have a partner better than me. Thank you. We would have been very good business partners if you'd trusted me, but unfortunately, I'm sorry. If you were looking at the screen earlier, when I said that Lola and I agreed he was boring, you might have spotted that Lola suggested that I could make an educational video out of him. Part of the education of this video is that if you don't block a scammer, the persistent ones will just continue to contact you, hoping that you'll give in, as our man is about to demonstrate at great length. Good morning, he said the following morning. Good morning. We've definitely decided we don't want to invest with you. Why don't you want to invest with me? Since we've already started paying. The land is already at our disposal. But Lola doesn't want to be understanding. We will be very good partners. Listen to me and trust me. I'm a trustworthy man. I will learn to speak English. Believe me, everything will be fine. Right? But in the meantime, just to show that you really do need to block scammers everywhere they contact you, he tried contacting Lola from a different number. She texted me and said he wrote to me from another number because I blocked him. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, who are you? Hello. Who are you? My friend, why do you mute your call? Why do you mute your call? Hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm I'm John Claude. I'm John Claude. I I I speak on I, I speak on uh, on the director general uh, yesterday. Uh, you are you are Lola. I'm John Claude. Je suis Jean Claude. If you are Jean Claude, why do you call me from another number? You muted your call again. You are very stupid. Why do you mute okay, your call? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, video video. Uh, plus tard, je vais le faire. Okay. Plus tard, je vais le faire. What do you want? 
What? What do you want? I I want I want to take talk to you. Okay? I want to talk to you. I told you yesterday. Okay. I. Hello. Yes, what do you want? You have another number. What do you want? What do you want? Tu sais, tu sais, j'apprends, j'apprends bien l'anglais là. I speak my my English is very bad. I told I told you yesterday. No. What do you want from me now? I want to talk to you. Simple, okay? Okay. Tell me, tell me. What? I want to talk to you. Écoute, tu as changé le numéro, pourquoi Yes. Tu, I want to talk tu to as, you. Écoute, tu as changé le numéro, I, pourquoi Bah ouais, dis-moi. Parce que euh, je suis un homme d'affaires, j'ai plein de numéros là. Je change de numéro parce que je suis un homme d'affaires très qualifié, certifié. Tu comprends Tu es Avec un homme d'affaires. Eh, hey, tomorrow, tomorrow, I want to go uh, anywhere, Costa. Si tu es un homme d'affaires, tu dois parler avec moi en un vidéo call. Ok, je vais le faire plus tard. Quand Maintenant là, maintenant là, je suis au volant. Je Pourquoi conduis, je conduis, je t'appelle. Pourquoi pas maintenant je parce, que... parce que maintenant là, je suis au volant et je, et je suis avec ma fille, je t'appellerai plus tard, je suis au volant. Je rentre maintenant à la maison, arrivé à la maison, je t'appelle. D'accord Ok. Why did you change the number Lola asked him. I changed my number because I have to go to Africa to follow the work of our partnership. The general manager says that the land is already at our disposal and that documents will be awarded to us if we pay the rest of the amount and I will go to Africa to follow the work and export the gold to Europe to market it. OK, said Lola. I'm not interested in this business anymore. But then he called Lola, played one of those short stolen videos. Hello. Hello. Hello, my friend. Speak. Uh, I, yeah, I I not see you. I can't see you either. Yeah, but I not I, I not can see you. I won't see you. Yeah, I can't see you either. Hello? Hello? I won't see you. Yeah, I want to see you too. Yeah, I won't see you. I will not see you. Okay. I won't see you. If you were watching the screen, you'll see that he played the same short stolen video clip at least twice. Or, as I said to Lola, he managed to say hello without moving his lips. How clever. Those are the sort of short video clips that victims fall for. He sent Lola several more messages. And then Lola blocked him. Meanwhile, I'd started doing some reverse image searches. 
and the images that were used in his profile. I found one on the website of Hairstyles for men over 50. I found one who claimed to be a grain trader in Ukraine from Ghana. I found several of somebody calling themselves Fabio Romano. And finally, I found the real one on TikTok. Meanwhile, Lola had been Googling how to curse in French and she had a short conversation with him. I won't play it to you because, as she herself said underneath, I don't think you can post that, but at least I cursed him. Having spoken to Lola, we got back to Persephone. I want to talk to you and it's serious. I want to tell you something very important, so answer me. What do you want to tell me? You know, I'm a man who has respect for women. The manager says he didn't get the money back, so go to the agency and get your money back. What I'm telling you is the truth. The general director of industry and mines says that he did not get the money back. So call the agency or go to the agency and your money will be given to you. You know a very special man who has a lot of respect for women. But Lola treated me badly and she insulted me and she even called me poor. But I didn't react because I respect women, because men and women have the same right. I respect the equality of the sexes. From now on, it's with you alone I want to talk, even if you're not interested in the project. I know that, but let's remain friends like at the beginning. I don't want to talk to Lola anymore. She doesn't have no respect for the elderly. He had definitely told me that he had the money, said Persephone in reply to him saying the manager says he didn't get the money. But listen, I thought he had already got the money back, but unfortunately he didn't get it back. But I also sent in the money he received by bank transfer, but the transfer by MoneyGram was not recovered. So go get your money tomorrow. You have to listen to me and trust me. You know I feel guilty about everything that happens between the two of us. I hope you understand me, the lack of trust and everything Lola tells you to discourage you. But know that I am an important person, but I am serious, sincere, honest and frank. I need understanding. I need someone understanding. You've been very understanding since the beginning of our conversation. You seem to be a good person and I trust you without having seen you. You have a very good character and I believe that we have the same profile of people. But I didn't like the way Lola treated me and now I don't want to talk to her anymore. And I don't care what she thinks of me. I really feel humiliated by Lola. She treated me like that I'm not, despite the fact that I wanted to be nice to her. She really disrespected me. I'm hurt and I no longer want to do business with this type of person who asks for proof at any time. There were two of us, you and me, and I even sent you certified documents. And you know it. I'm a very nice, trustworthy and serious person. We'll take an in-depth look at those certified documents later, said Persephone copied and pasted the bit where he'd said, OK, Mr Karuma says he received the money. Is Mr Karuma a liar? I couldn't possibly do business with someone who tells lies. And in reply to him saying, I no longer want to do business with this type of person who asks for proof at any time, Persephone said, I think it's essential to get proof if we're going to do thousands of euros worth of business with someone we've never met. Why are you so reluctant to provide it? I'm not reluctant. But I don't like disrespect like Lola did with me. You know, I never disrespected you because I received a very good education from my parents. And I respect the woman because the woman is not an instrument of pleasure, but she's the honour and the virtue of the house. And she deserves greater respect and greater consideration. So not respecting a woman is forgetting your own mother. I also respect gender equality. I'm a very courteous and serious person, but I no longer want to talk to Lola. And I'm determined but I want to continue talking to you because you've never disrespected me and you've always considered me as a trustworthy person. I will approve everything you ask me because you are a good and serious person. I like your way of being. Do you have anything adult, sensible and business-like to say or do you just want to moan like a small kid? I ain't having to repeat myself, but I'll say it again. Is Mr Karuma a liar? I couldn't possibly do business with someone who tells lies. Mr Karuma is not a liar. He's a serious and sincere person. Last year, I also invested in diamonds in Ivory Coast. Mr Karuma was a good, trustworthy person. You know, Mr Karuma is the Director General of Industry and Mines. He told me he received the money, but he didn't get it on MoneyGram. Do you understand? Mr Karuma is trustworthy. Don't worry about that. Everything will go better in very good conditions. The field document is already ready. 
so I would like you and I to decide together. In business, understanding is essential. And the most important thing is also discussion and morale. I want to move forward. I so want to move forward with a partner like you. I can assure you that Mr. Karuma is a trustworthy man and he does not lie. No, I don't understand. Where did he receive the money if it wasn't on MoneyGram? Yes, he said he called the number. They gave the wrong withdrawal code, so they told them to return the money to the sender. That's why I told you to return it to the agency, to get the money back. One of you is lying. You clearly told me Mr. Karuma says he received the money. So who was lying? Did Mr. Karuma lie when he said he'd received the money? Or did you lie when you told me that? One of you is lying. Which is it? I don't think he would have lied to me. He thought he could get the money back by calling the number. But unfortunately, he didn't get it back. Moneygram tell me the money was collected, so one of you's lying, unless of course Mr Karuma doesn't exist, and you're pretending to be him. If he did not recover the money, and he told me that he'd recovered, then perhaps it was not him who wrote. You know the Secretariat often responds to messages. You mean someone else collected the money and has stolen it. If I think I am Mr Karuma, then I would not have received a document from him. Then someone else has stolen the money. Mr Karuma needs to find out who it is. Maybe someone else stole it. I'm a trustworthy person. And so is Mr Karuma, of course. Mr Karuma needs to find out who has the money. I would tell Mr Karuma to make every effort to find out who stole the money. And I believe that he will make an effort with the Ministry of Defence. Remember that Ministry of Mines? It's turned into the Ministry of Defence. So what do you say for the field? Ministry of Defence, why are they involved? I agree with you. Mr Karuma must find the money so that the project continues. Why are we involved with the Ministry of Defence? Yes, he'll make an effort with the Ministry of Defence to find the money. That's what he told me. You know, the gold mining lands are protected by the Ministry of Defence, so they're in partnership with the Ministry of Industry and Mines. No, I didn't know that. I understand you, but don't worry, everything will be better. I'll explain to you. When the land belonged to us, then the Ministry of Defence will protect our land for six months, and the gold will also be protected as far as Europe for the sale. Then everything will be safe until the gold is exported to Europe. Now, what do you say about the field? When do we need to get the land for weeding to begin? You know, one hectare of land is big, so the work must begin. You know your opinion counts too, so tell me something. I say I don't trust anyone there, and I definitely don't want to invest. I'd like my 1,000 euros back. I don't know why you're no longer interested in the project. What is it? Are you really that stupid? Someone has stolen a 1,000 euros from me. They're not people I'd trust to do business with. But I told you that Mr Karuma will make his effort to recover the money. Trust me, let's invest. Believe me, everything will be better. With my desire to move forward, I'll give you two weeks after the investment and you'll receive your share of the €130,000, 50% each. I understand, and I see that you don't trust them, but at least trust me. And you'll see I will even do the impossible for the business to be a success. You know I've never failed in business. Listen, I have 25 years of professional business experience. But the problem is that I've never invested in an English-speaking country. I invested with the Prince of Saudi Arabia, who also spoke English and Arabic. But we ended up understand and manage business, and it's been a total success for us. I've also invested in Spain, Lithuania, Germany, and several other countries. I travel too much. I don't joke with business. If it gets my €1,000 back, I might think again. But he lied to you about receiving the money, and I don't trust him. He says he will try to find the money in two days. I understand you, and I know that it's difficult for you to trust him. But you must also listen to me. My words are not futile. Oh, yes, they are, pal. Good night. Good morning, he said the following day. Hey, he said the following evening, and I did nod him. The General Director of Industry and Mines, Mr Karuma, says that he has managed to recover the money now, so our investment is €2,000, which is currently in the investment fund. He says that he'll send us a document which certifies that we've already paid €2,000 for the investment, and that the operating land has already been reserved for us, and you've paid €1,000, and I've also paid €1,000. Then we must pay the rest, so that the gold mining begins. First weeding and extraction. After paying the rest of the money for the land, then the labourers will start their work of weeding and then extraction with the machines. Answer me, please. The wish replied. I want my 1,000 euros back, please. 
Listen, the money's already in the National Investment Fund. And the money is irrecoverable. So what do you want to do? I too invested, and so why bother the other if we trusted each other? And we invested first, then we have to make the effort to finish. But since you're no longer interested, and you don't trust, so let it be so. I can't do anything. Either we continue the project, or our money is both lost. I'm tired of your lack of confidence, you and Lola. I'm tired of you or Mr Karuma's lies. I don't know which of his lying, but one of you is. So goodbye. OK, thank you. That's not what I wanted between the two of us. But since that's what you want, then I won't say more. Do what you want. Since you like to lose in business, goodbye. How long do you think that took him before he came back? Send me a message, he said, half an hour later, when you've thought about it. The following day, he sent a photograph of a man sitting in a car. But by then, I'd had enough of him, so I'd ghosted him. And now, let's take a more in-depth look at what our man called the certified documents that he sent to Persephone. We'll start with the one-headed investment in the mining sector in Ivory Coast. There are so many red flags in here that I probably won't be able to cover them all. First, of course, is that it gives a fixed price for the price of gold. The price of gold varies on a daily basis. Then it says investors have a profit of 152% minimum on one hectare per week. How would the person writing this document even know that? They don't know what your costs are going to be. They don't know how much gold you're going to extract. It even tells you how much gold you're going to collect. Investors collect 8 to 11 kilograms per week on one hectare, it says. Well, suppose you employ twice as many people. Wouldn't you extract twice as much? And you'd only be there for half as long. If this document is anything at all, it's just a description of what investors might be getting if they decide to invest. Now, let's do a Google search for the Ministry of Industry and Mines in the Ivory Coast. We can find the Ministry of Mines and Energy. We can find the Ministry of Industry. Here's the Ministry of Mines and Energy. And yes, that's the logo that's been put on that forged document. Here's the Ministry of Industry. But there doesn't appear to be the Ministry of Industry and Mines. And now, let's take a more in-depth look at that partnership contract. Partnership contract is headed. This contract is signed and takes effect from the 30th of October 2023 between Jean-Claude Perrault, living in France, precisely in Paris, 9th arrondissement, Paris 006985, of French origin, and Persephone Gazer, living in Orkney, off the north coast of Scotland. He never even asked Persephone for her full address, and him being of French origin, it's completely irrelevant to a partnership contract, I would have thought. Preamble, it continues. A. Considering that the parties wish to join forces to pursue common business objectives. B. Considering that the parties consider the present contract to be the best means to achieve their common objectives. Considering the mutual commitments contained in this contract, the profits of which will be shared 50% each. Jean-Claude Perrault and Persephone Gazer are in partnership to invest in mining gold in Ivory Coast. Documents will be issued to them after the first pay. Then completely irrelevantly underneath, it says trust, rigour, loyalty, work, done on the 30th of October 2023 in Paris. And a signature. Well, this signed partnership agreement hasn't been signed by Persephone, so it's completely invalid. If this was a genuine partnership contract, we'd expect it to have been issued by an attorney or a solicitor or some kind of lawyer. You'd expect to have had contact with that lawyer. You'd probably expect to have been sent at least two copies so that you could sign both and retain one for yourself. And you'd expect it to have the full contact details of the lawyer that had drawn it up. Of course, if you are sent documents that appear to have been drawn up by a lawyer, Make sure you do your homework and check out whether that lawyer really exists. On this channel, we've had fake ones issued by fake lawyers. So I think there are three lessons from this video. One, as Lola said, is just how persistent some scammers can be. This scammer provided a brilliant demonstration of why you need to block them everywhere that they will contact you. Because if you don't, they will just continue contacting you continue to try to draw you back into their scam. The second lesson is do your homework. 
if someone starts sending you documents, make sure you check them out thoroughly. And if you aren't 110% certain of their origin, just assume that they're fake. And the third lesson is just never do business with anyone that you've met online. If you meet someone online, then they immediately start offering you business opportunities or opportunities to make money, then you know you're talking to a scammer. Please just know that no one will contact you online randomly to offer you a business opportunity or to offer you the opportunity to make a large amount of money, at least not if their offer is genuine. All these are from scammers and all they want to do is take your money. Remember the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, then it is. Never invest in anything, online or offline, without doing your full due diligence and researching the opportunity thoroughly. And if you aren't 100% certain that you know what you're getting involved with, then don't invest. And remember that all investments carry risk. Never invest more money than you can afford to lose. I'm not a financial advisor. If you do decide to invest in anything, then make sure that you consult a qualified and experienced financial advisor. I hope you found these two videos useful. If you did, I hope you found these two videos useful. There is a third episode, that money, that, that call to the fake MoneyGram claim line. If you enjoyed these episodes, you know what to do. Please like them. Please share them. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in episode three with that fake MoneyGram call line.